All right, so for meds. So meds are, are tricky. You can do things a lot of different ways. But if I had to just be honest with you, like the majority of times you can probably get away with what I have on the counter right now. Okay, the only things that I would say that people would add is sometimes people like to do this. And you guys could totally start doing this until people tell you not to. You could have atropine on top, ready to go in case there's an emergency. And you can have epi on top, ready to go if there's an emergency. I, I don't understand what the difference is between having it there and having it in the Pixis. But again, these are things you're checking, make sure you have it. But now when your preceptor comes in and sees that you have everything possibly ready, it does look good. It looks like you're putting in the effort, you're taking the extra time to be completely prepared and safe. And that makes me feel better knowing that like you've got this, right? But to give you the inside information, most of the drugs you're gonna use 90% of the time is right in, what, what's what, in, uh, sorry, it's what's in front of you. What you really need to go to sleep in a really bad situation for the most part is probably just like a muscle relaxant and some type of induction agent that can keep you asleep, right? So usually propofol, rock, or sucks is really fast acting. And, and you know, sometimes you can't use it. So you could use RSI dose of rock. This is really all you need. But you know, in anesthesia world, we can do a lot of really nice things. So a lot of times we give an anxiolytic, right? So we'll give uh, first ed, right? Some people give it in pre-op. Some people give it when they come in the room and stuff. It technically isn't retroamnestic, but some people say they don't remember what happened 10 minutes before. So I don't really know. It's nice. It makes people at ease. One of the other things that's really good about it is it's really good at amnesia. So if you were going to do a propofol infusion only for an anesthetic, there's higher risk for awareness. So it's nice to mix this with your anesthetic because this gives great amnesia. This doesn't give as great as amnesia. This is all on like a scale, right? And I couldn't even give you a number of what the scale is. SIVO gives you great amnesia. So some people who run TIVO only propofol will actually add a little bit of SIVO in the background, like 0 0.5, 0 0.25, just to make sure there's enough amnesia on board. Um, I usually will put a BIS monitor on. So anyways, that's what this is for. You don't necessarily need it, but it's there. Now, narcotics, to induce and put someone to sleep and intubate them, it is nice to have narcotics. It does help with airway uh, reflexes and uh, reactivity. But listen, 50 to 100 mics is usually what most people draw up. And you're going to label this. I don't know, my, my camera's not focusing well. But you're going to label this, right? You're not going to give enough narcotics to totally... Uh, to totally eliminate the uh, reactivity or sympathetic system from in, in, from actually doing the DL and stuff. You can't get, you won't give enough narcotics with 50 or 100. So if you think that's why you're giving it, well, it's helping. It also helps, these two things help reduce the amount of propofol you need to give as well. Don't forget that. But you know, you're not gonna totally have ton the SNS response. You'll try, you know, you'll make a little dent in it, but you won't. Um, lidocaine also helps with airway reactivity. Uh, so you could say you're giving it for that, but you also could say you're giving it for a lot of different reasons, but most of the time, most people are giving this because it does help with the, in, the induction, it helps decrease the amount of propane you need to give, but it helps with the burning of the propofol. So it's nice to give this as well. Um, so you need to know for these, it's kind of like, depends on the patient, how much you're gonna give. This you usually give, you know, 40 to 100, depending on their weight. Uh, but with the propane rock or the sucks, you should also consider having your sucks out on the top as an emergency, you're prepared, you have sucks. You need to know what your induction dose is, your induction dose is, induction dose is. What your RSI dose is, what your RSI dose is. It's weight based. Know those numbers before you do your induction every single time and you'll be, you'll be all set. And then in your drawer, always have an extra 10 cc's. I don't have one here, propofol, ready to go. And as you're checking your drawer every morning too, make sure you have sucks, you have ephedrine, neo, drawn up and ready to go. If it's not pre-drawn, you make it yourself. And then you have your emergency drugs. I always like to make sure I have some gamma dex because if you RSI dose with rock, how do you reverse it? So that's a really good idea. Um, and then the rest of the stuff, just to make sure you have what you need for the, the whole day. There's lots of different things in different places and stuff. Some people will prepare their antibiotics. ANSEF is your most common drug that we give. So you know what? You should know what, what this works on as an antibiotic. You should just know it because you know someone's going to ask the question. It's the most common one that we give. Flagyl is pretty common with GI procedures. You should look up why we give flagyl in addition to ANSEF. 
Um, and then Vanco is probably the third most common after that, along with Clinda and Cipro and stuff. So just know what your antibiotics do and why you give certain ones for certain types of bacteria, certain areas of the body and stuff. That's not a bad idea. I don't normally draw up stuff because if, I don't want to waste, I like to wait to hear, but I would just always start off your day with the preceptor, like you like having the ANSEF drawn up if we think we're gonna use it and have that feeling. Some might like glyco drawn up as an emergency drug. It doesn't really act that fast, so it's not a great emergency drug. That's what atropine's for. But just ask your preceptor, you know, as a question, like I wanna be prepared, what, you know, what can I do? Uh, and then just have prepared whatever they think um, is most appropriate. Okay, well, I think you guys are going to be great. Hope this helps.